Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Today I present to you this feature length film rated B for Banger. Go to your DVD player, Jack Paul Blart Mall Cop, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Garfield 2, and Taylor 2 Kitties. Get that shit out of there. Throw it in the fireplace and watch it burn. Because we got something better to watch today. We got the two best fog players facing off against each other. I didn't say two of the best fog players, I didn't stutter. Two best fog players currently in Advanced Wars by Web. I know Rhymer's really good too. I know Hogat's really good too. Star Flash, there's a whole bunch of great fog players. But the two best, in my opinion, Go7, Tordred. These two players, oh, they're so good. And they have opposing playstyles. You got the aggressive Tordred with his tanks wrecking havoc. And then you have the calculated Go7, King of the Penguins, as he likes to say on his YouTube channel. So these two best players, opposite playing styles makes for a really juicy game now if you guys have not seen the game that i hosted in the fog goblin goblin between these two players you better get your ass to watch that game because i just want to no, that is the probably the best game that i have casted on my channel it was a live game it was like two three hours long you should watch that game that game was nutty i still can't believe what happened anyway these two players they have a bit of a history they have a bit of a rivalry toward dread and co7 and so, I don't really need to give too much introduction to them. Go 7's like a 1700 player, 1650 at the very least. Tor Dread's about a 1600 player as well. So these guys, they're qualified. Don't really need to say much else. Now, moving on from that, let's look at this map right here. And it happens to be a map that I enjoy as well. To Athos. First thing I hear when I hear this, I think of that old coot in Fire Emblem 7 who goes to kill Nurgle or whatever. It's like, hey, Athos to Athos! So that's what I think about. But to Athos, in actuality, is a pretty fun map. It's one of the few two-base fog maps. Two-base, three airports. Unheard of, really, in Advanced Wars by Web. Very unique. And you don't really see too many two-base fog maps in general. Forget the three airports. I really like two-base maps because they're very sharp. You make a little tiny mistake early, you lose a tank, you're pretty screwed. It's gonna snowball. You have a finite amount of units. You can only pump out so many units with two bases. You're not gonna have that many infantry. So every infantry that dies, it's gonna be kind of a big deal. You need to conserve your units. You need to use what you have. You can't lose it. You heal your units. You need to keep your unit count up. You get down on the unit count, it's hard to recover. I don't care if you have three airports. You only have two bases. So another thing about Taathos is you have some intel. You have a little spy in the back over here. Got a little Riki over here, showing what your opponent is building from one of their bases. This recon good swerve over here, swerve over here. Eventually it will get killed by an artillery. Typically you plop the artillery here, the recon hides in this, or you just bust open this pipe seat and murder the recon in cold blood. That's another thing. So you have a little bit of a spy going on behind enemy lines. You can see what's building in the airport and the base. You can shift back and forth, back and forth, airport, base, airport, base. Another mechanic in this, the three airports as I mentioned, it's base and airport versus middle airport and base and airport. So there's no real strong side weak side. The strong side weak side is to your choosing. Typically you see the, the spying recon is going to be your opponent's weak side because you see information so you just want to keep building infantry. You don't want to let your opponent know, oh I'm switching from a tank to an anti air this turn. Oh I built a medium tank this turn. Oh I built an artillery this turn. So typically you see the strong side on the hidden side. But that can change. I mean, some people with no fear. You're building big, beefy units on the side. The recon can see it. Who gives a shit? You just roll with it. So you're going to see a lot of copters as well. There's three airports after all and two bases. Remember what I said. You want to keep your unit count high. So naturally, you're going to be looking to build some copters. Sometimes you can be double copped in it. You can build bombers. Fighters are pretty good. Battleships, not so great. They lock down the middle a little bit, but I, you don't typically see anything built from the port. Another mechanic about this. You see this airport over here? You need to build like a T-copter to get this port up at the top and to get the city and this airport as well. See, these are not connected. You need to use a transport in order to get over here. You could use a black boat if you so choose. You can use a copter, which is more common to get the T-copter from over here to go behind. The question is, when do I invest in this? Do I get an early T-copter or do I go maximum pressure in the middle? That's another thing that's balanced about this map. You don't know if your opponent's going for the economy guild, I mean the economy build, or if they're going for the attacking build where they take control of the center. The center is pretty contested. It's only one base in one versus one base, in, you know, like on each side, just one base versus one base. So you have a finite amount of units. So getting control of the center, 
It's quite good and it's hard to recapture those properties. You know why? Artillery here. You're not going to capture that or recapture that. Artillery here. Not going to recapture. Like, look, you can, if you're black, you can put an artillery here. If you're blue, you can put an artillery here. And this thing is probably not going to be switching hands very soon. It's going to be either not taken or whoever has it first is probably not going to give it up. It's basically going to stay in opponent's hands, uh, whoever gets it first. So another strategy, forego the copter. Get that later. First you get this, then you get this. Make sure before your opponent can get in, get an artillery lock on it. And you can have a nice stally game. This map actually can lead to stally situations by virtue of having no strong side, weak side. That's very obvious. You don't have two bases to overrun one base. You just have one base versus one base on each side. Well, the airports as well, but it leads to more stalemate kind of maps. So typically you see more stally COs when you're playing this map. Maybe you see a Hawk in tier one. Maybe you see, uh, well, I wouldn't choose Olaf in this map in tier two. I'd probably choose Max to be perfect honest, but more of a stally. Once you get control of these, these cities and whatnot, it's hard to change enemy hands. Comp towers, you're gonna get your own comp tower. That's basically the main gist of all the mechanics. Also, you wanna control this mountain if you're black and you wanna control this mountain if you're blue to get very nice vision. Recons aren't entirely needed on this map. There's some nice mountains over here on your weak side you might wanna recon if you're blue over here and if you're black over here. But if you're on your strong uh, or taking control of this uh, with the uh, infantry or a mech or what have you, you get great vision. You don't really need to worry about recons on this side if you're blue. So pretty, it can get pretty stolid. And it's also a question of when do I build a T-copter? When do I build an artillery to kill the recon? And when do I build something to go in the middle? Is your tank gonna go in the middle first? Are you gonna go kill the recon first? Are you gonna get a T-topter first? There's three basically ways you can spread out and there's a fork on the road, a triple tri fork in the road. So without further ado, let's get into this match because you know it's gonna be nutty. You know it's gonna be nutty. So go at the top in the bangs as Adder. And not at the top, his recon's at the top, but he's actually at the bottom straight chilling. Tordred, he is at the top. So already we have a pretty big mirror going on. Nothing too unusual. You always want to get this first so you can pump out units a little earlier. You don't really want to overextend. There's no chains over here. As you notice, there's no real chains. Uh, there's only like one chain on this entire map. And I think it's like just capturing this in the comp tower, which isn't in this, in this port as well. Capturing the city in the port over here is another chain, but very limited chains and in the back as well. So. Typically, you just want to go for the early, easy income rather than going hard in the middle with your infantry. Early recon from Tordred, like I said, or from Go. Uh, as I said earlier, you want to recon on this side if you're facing this mountainous area because this infantry is going to provide vision already. You don't need a, a recon over here by any means. So we got an early recon. See what Tordred? It seems to be the meta in this instance. Both of them going for early recon on this side. I'm not even going to say strong side, weak side in this map because it can be whatever the hell you want. Uh, so. Pretty, pretty interesting start so far, both going for recons. I'm assuming both of them are gonna save up some funds for an artillery soon or for a tank. Go for going this city over here, going for the early middle property. Like I mentioned earlier, once it goes in someone's hands, it is really hard to take it back. So once you get an artillery after that, plop it in there or an artillery over there from black, it's hard to change hands. So I quite agree with that move. I think it's a smart move. Tordred opting to put his recon in the middle, whereas this recon over here is looking like it's gonna go over for this property and see what's going on over here and spying, making sure he doesn't get that or that. Whereas Tordred, he's more interested in stopping these two middle properties. He won't be able to stop this property. The recon won't reach in time, but he will be able to stop this property. So, so far, no real divergence other than the recon direction. King of the Penguins, probably gonna build an artillery this turn. He's got 7K. 7k, one infantry, one artillery. You build an artillery here, bust through that, murder the recon, no more spy. No, doesn't opt to do that, just goes double infantry. Probably going to opt for the tank build, where he's gonna build a tank on the side over here to follow up on the recon. So if a tank attacks that recon, you're gonna have a tank on tank war. Go7 just nestling that in the corner. He knows the airport hasn't been captured yet. Usually I would go back and forth, back and forth to see what's going on in the, in the uh, airport and as well as the base. But for now, he knows the airport hasn't been captured yet. So he's just chilling straight in the corner. Tordra now sees that Go7 went for this early over here. Another thing I like to do in early games, especially in limited income maps, even if he captures that, I would attack that with a recon. You know why? Because it's gonna cost him repairs. It's gonna cost him 200 gold and perhaps he, let's, for instance, let's say he had 9K. 
or 8k rather, enough for a tank and an infantry, he has 8k. You knock that down minus 200 gold for the repairs, and suddenly you only have 7,800, so you can't buy a tank and an infantry. You're either gonna have to base skip to get a tank, or you're gonna have to get like an artillery and infantry or two infantry. So there is actually a lot of merits to bringing your recon and attacking an infantry that has already cacked early on in the game when you're not fearing a tank. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tordred actually attacked that. And go seven with this little Riki over here. See, he has he's doing the little re recon sandwich over here, the cluster cluck. He's going in over here, he's like, oh, no tank over here. These are free hits. So I kind of like that, the recon sandwich over here. Actually, I'm, I'm agreeing with Ghost Start so far more because he's gonna try to stop these two properties, whereas Tordred's recon, it's gonna do some repair damage, but it's not really stopping any caps right now. Tordred opting for the tank though. So now he, he didn't see the recon, but Tordred, he's got the intuition. He's a very intuitive player, similar to me, but even better. He doesn't really need to think about things, he just knows. He knows that a recon is the meta. And he's bringing his own tank over here, covering everything exactly. The recon can only hit that, but he doesn't have vision of it. So this recon is basically not gonna be able to do anything. Torja doesn't give half a shit that this recon sees there's a tank. Now this recon's like, uh, what do I do? Uh, okay. We're just gonna have to retreat. There's no real use for it anymore, so. I kind of like that by Tordra, just a, an in-your-face tank, like, what are you going to do about it? So, so far, no real divergence. Now going in the middle, sees the other recon. However, Go 7, I do like this opening because he got the early, early middle, whereas Tordred's behind. It's going to be hard for him to grab the city with this pesky recon here, this pesky penguin over here. So it's going to be tough. Fun fact, Go 7, he doesn't say, he's not king of the penguins. He, when he says king of the penguins, there's an A in there. There's a penguin. I'm just throwing it out there for y'all. So, so far, Torjad bringing his recon over here. He knows that he's not going to be able to do anything. He doesn't actually go for the uh, repairs hit. Because then we start some recon on recon violence. We don't want to see that. This isn't WWE. We don't want to see any of that shit. So, Torjad brings his tanks down. Both of them have control of the mountains. They see everything going on over here. It's beautiful to have control of that mountain. You don't really need a mech. Mechs aren't really good on two base maps in general. Uh, maybe if you're adder, perhaps. But typically you're not gonna see a mech. But just putting an infantry over here, even if it's not damaging anything, that vision is glorious. You can see so much stuff from here. You can see things going into this forest over there. You can see units trying to go get capture a property over here, walking through the fog. It is beautiful to have the control of that mountain. The mountainous terrain is your gain. I don't know why I said that, but I'll say it again. Now we got an early artillery. And by early artillery, I mean a day seven, pretty early artillery. Now go seven, King of the Penguins is gonna go murder that recon. Sometimes you can put it here and try to murder the recon, but it's gonna hide in the corner. So typically you're gonna bust through the pipe seam. One artillery shot, one artillery shot, tank shot, boom, you're through. And I kind of like this actually a little bit, bit better. You know why? Because he's gonna capture the comm tower just in time for this, before this hits its first shot. Normally without a comp tower, it's gonna do like 40 damage. 40, 40, 80 damage. And then a tank does like 14 and it's not enough. However, if you get a comp tower, you're gonna do 44, I think. 44, 44, 88. Tank does 15. You're busting through that in two turns. So I kind of like that. Now to think about it, the early artillery doesn't really make much sense unless you're getting that comp tower first. These guys are smart, dude. Girls too. Oh, early mech. Early mech. Early mech. Did not see that coming actually. I did not expect an early mech. He's at her, so it's it's not too much of a surprise, but this early, and typically I thought it might be over here for, to use that mountain, uh, but Go 7 can make anything work. He is an advanced warrior genius. That, there's no much more to say about it. Um, but now Tordred's got tanks on both sides. He's dabbling. Honestly, in a two base map, it's fine to dabble. There's no strong side. It's make it whatever you want uh, so there's, there's no harm in doing double tankies on both sides dabblers establers unite uh builds his first uh, artillery as well both of them are mirroring he's he's already got the comm tower so it's going to be a two-hit kill i'm assuming there's going to be a tank built over on this side probably a tank here and a tank there uh, multiple tankies gets a free kill on the recon i guess tortured was just caught completely off guard just didn't realize that a tank and a recon is going to murder him uh or does it doesn't have the comp tower. Tanky Tordred has the comp tower. If he had a comp tower, 100% that's dead. However, 
And 100% if he's Jake too. If he's Jake attacking from two plants, 100% dead. However, we got weak little ladder over here. So now go. Yo, he's definitely building a tank over here now because he's going all out. This is becoming Go's strong side. He's got a tank, a recon. He's gonna build another tank over here. He's gonna have an artillery busy busting through that type scene. Busting a good old, yeah, busting through the pipe scene. Not gonna say any more about that. Go seven. Not opting the bust through the pipe scene, putting this on the offense, it's probably gonna plop that bad boy right here, prevent that. Maybe put him over here to lock this down later. Interesting play by Go7, very aggressive. Already is making this his strong side. Gonna build a tank over there, of course. Very aggressive, very aggressive. Let's see what Torjord responds with. He does have a tank over here that will get a strike, actually. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no. He can attack the recon from the forest, but he can't reach the tank due to this forest right here because it has a terrain cost of two. So go seven though, I don't agree with this. D attacking over here and attacking over here. This makes sense. You got the artillery, you got the recon, you got the tank. He's getting a little ballsy over here on his weak side. He has a mech that's nowhere near the front lines. He doesn't even have a comm tower yet. He just built a tank. Tordred's got a big old tankers over here like, that's a little ambitious for Go7. Um, the first move, I don't really agree with him so far. So now, Tordred makes some pretty interesting moves. He attacks the recon over here in order to secure a two-hit KO on that tank. Boomba. Interesting, because you can't attack first with a tank, as you notice. Well, you could from the shoal, but hell, you're not gonna attack a tank from a shoal. That, this tank is gonna wreck you from the, uh, the plane over there instead, hidden in the forest, you can't counterattack that tank unless you bring an infantry to reveal it from the forest. So Tordred, having the last lap, kills the recon. His own recon survives. It looked pretty grim for him right there for a second, but due to lacking the comm tower, there is an opportunity cost for getting the middle. Tordred doesn't have the middle, and he's got a little bit of an income advantage, or soon to be, but he's missing the comm tower, so there's an opportunity cost for getting uh, late calm tower. Tordred brings his tanks in the middle, centralizing them both. Does a double Tordred tank. No one, no one ever was surprised by that. And uh, let's see what Ghost 7 does. Tordred over here, he's gonna bust through that. He's gonna get these two properties earlier. He's gonna get, kill the spy earlier. The spy won't see what when copters are built over here. He won't see what's built in the base. Whereas Go is going all in over here. I'm more in the Tordred camp where it's a little, you know, tried and true. You go to the back over here, TT tried and true, kill the recon, move on with life. Go is going all in right now. And uh, he wants to stop this property, he wants to stop this property, he's gonna lock down that. I assume put this uh, artillery one space up, murders that infantry, allowing a cluster cluck over here, tank attack from here, tank attack from here, that thing is dead. So that's a bit risky. Not anymore though. Not anymore. There's one little thing about this though. Once you kill the tank, you lose the vision. So this infantry is going to have to go on the mountain or it's going to have to go up here in the forest. So also, ooh, this is really ballsy by Go7. Cause look, if this tank over here attacks right here first, one, two, three, four, five, you can attack the tank and the artillery. This is really feisty by Go7. I don't know if I agree with this. Tordred, luckily for him, his, or luckily for Ghost 7, Tordred's tanks are a little out of, later out of position, but this could be scary from Tordred depending on which tank attacks first. Because if you attack with this tank over here first, this one not, will not reach the artillery. One, two, three, four, five, and you won't reach. So if you attack with the farther one, you should always attack with your farther units first. You know why? Because then you can see follow-up attacks afterward. Maybe you bust through the front lines with your farther away tank, then your closer ones can go even farther. Or if you bust through the lines with your close units, your farther ones might not reach farther back behind the front lines. So, Tordred's a smart player. I am almost certain he's gonna attack with the farther away tank first. He's intuitive, he doesn't even need to plan it. He just knows. So, I would expect that. Oh, doesn't even bother. Doesn't, oh, I know why. Tordred's a sneaky son of a snutch. I, don't, I didn't say a single Bible word here, look. This was in the recon's vision. He knows there's an artillery. I think he expected there to be an, uh, an infantry there to block. 
Because you have no idea. You're basically going off of nothing, assuming there's nothing there. Because if you get trapped, you attack the tank, it's going to get hit by the artillery, and the other one gets trapped. Ooh, you're really in for a rough spot. So, therefore, Tordred opts for the safe route. He just attacks an infantry over there, kills an infantry over there. He's a little bit behind in the capture game. He might capture this, whereas Go is not anywhere near capturing that because he put his thing in the center. He's already got the lock on the city. I mentioned this early on in the game. Locking the city, I don't know if Tordred's ever going to get that property. If I'm being perfectly honest, I don't know if he's ever going to get that property. It's going to be quite difficult. Um, but now we got enough artillery over here on this side over here. Um, you could bust through, so I forgot to mention. Sometimes you can bust through this pipe seam and get it with infantry like that, but typically you want a T-copter, because the T-copter, you can actually get this airport later as well. If you just get bust through the pipe seam over here, you won't actually reach this airport. You'll only get these back too. So, and it also puts an artillery, uh, like not, not, not doing shit for like two to three turns. So King of the Pines brings his tank in. He's gonna get a hit off here, but there's gonna be another tank in waiting. This mech, man, I don't know. Maybe right here, then use a power. One, two, three, it can start to get to the front lines. I don't know, I didn't like that early mech. Now go seven, building another artillery over here in the back so we can finally kill that spy recon. Tordred over here. Yeah, just one more artillery hit and that's he's gonna bust through. And then after busting through, he's gonna get one shot by the uh, recon. So if I'm go seven, I'm gonna put that recon on top of a city or on top of this city in order to prevent the one shot. Because if it's on a road, it's gonna get one shot with the comm tower. So he's smart, he'll 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 do that. And Go7 pretty feisty over here. Doesn't quite get the two hit KO. He wouldn't get the two hit KO. If he was Jake, which I kind of like Jake on this map a lot, uh, he would have gotten the two hit KO, but he doesn't have a follow up to even put on the base anyway. Assuming he was Jake and he had an infantry here, it would make more sense than he plop it on the city. He can't take advantage of the terrain. But now one, two, three, four, five, six, this is gonna get on the city. Gonna you cripple that to 1 HP or cripple that to 5 HP. So we'll see what happens there. Yep, that's gonna be locked down for a long ass time. Go seven with the copter over here, smart. You know, Tordred's smart. He's gonna build an anti-air next time, I can feel it. It's day 10. Typically I build an anti-air from days eight to 10. That's usually the sweet spot. Some maps may even earlier, smart go seven, doesn't want the one hit KO. I'm telling these players, you just know. They just always make the most optimal moves uh, for the most part. <laughs> they always, for the most part, make the most optimal. That's just the oxymoron. Uh, but they're, they're good players. Unfortunately for Go7, he needs to use a power to reach that, but he probably will pop a power in order to kill that tank, to be perfectly honest. Uh, so, gets a kill off over here. Not a kill, but down to one HP, like I predicted. Capturing the property over here. Go7 does have a 2k advantage because he does not uh, allowing Tordred to have that property. Tordred is a little bit behind on these back properties where Go7 is a little bit better off. Starting to get some artillery proliferation. Each side has two artillery now. Gets a hit off over here, but it won't kill. Bring the infantry back. There's always that stupid bug with this replay viewer for some reason. Kill that. Capture the cities. Get a nice little chain. Two extra income. Two, 2k extra income. Definitely, oh, not building an, an anti-air quite yet because he built the copter. Copters make sense. And now we're probably gonna see the power maybe? Nope. Just instead opting to go tank on tank and basically daring. Yeah, you're not gonna attack into me. I have a copter and a crippled tank and this mech that you haven't even seen yet, but it's gonna be relevant finally. And now using a power, one, two, three, four, plop that little bad boy over there. And you start capping these back two properties. And then finally the third property, and that's 3K. So you, you don't wanna forget about this. Sometimes people go so crazy, they go so bad, boom, like, <laughs> And they forget about 3k back here. Sometimes they even forget about 5k. They don't even get these two properties. They're just like, rah, rah, rah. that's not how it goes. You need to get these 5k. 5k is a big deal. This is a low income map. Look, we're only at 1700 each. That's like a tank copter, uh, tank copter infantry build right there, minimum. So, and you want to heal. Like I said earlier on in this game, when you have two bases, you're gonna heal those bad boys. I don't care if you like blocking with your crippled units usually. When it's two base, keep your bad boys alive, okay? Even your good boys, keep your good boys alive. Now Tordred doesn't quite have the lock on that yet, but I'm assuming he's gonna attack with the infantry then sneak that little son of a snitch down here. So he's not gonna allow Go to get that property too easily. Go seven, smart move. 
subtle, smart move. You know why? You attack with the tank. This infantry cannot capture that. The tank will be on the city. Smart move, my ghost seven. He's just, you know, he's one of a kind. He's one of a kind. And Tordred knows the same thing. When she's blasted through, this tank is going to attack. He doesn't want to get one shot. So the infantry stop for another turn. Sees the copter, now brings an anti-air in. Starting to get near the superpowers. Ghost 7 has not popped his power yet. I think he's working, waiting for the perfect time. He could have actually attacked this copter, the tank, but he opted not to. Maybe he was afraid of an anti-air. Um, that is really feisty. You attack this. Oh, wait a minute. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So if the copter attacks from down here, this will not reach even with a Jake superpower. So that's a little dicey, and he doesn't know about the mech. The mech actually might be irrelevant when, when he uses his power this turn. Side slip. So I'm assuming the copter's going to attack first, then the mech. There you go. Pop plop. Easy. Oh, worst place to attack from. Here's one of Go 7's mistakes. One, two, yeah, I already counted that. Like, you attack from this tile over here, you attack from this tile over here. Otherwise, you should see that Tordred it's pretty close to his superpower. You need to anticipate eight movement from the base rather than six movements. So I don't really like that. Now the mech's probably going to attack. Yep. Start capping. That's what's happening. Capping, what's happening? Talk about. And uh, yeah, so let's see if that copter is killed or Tordred pops his super right here. He might not even pop a super though because there's not too many targets for him to attack right now. He's probably going to take a peeky poo by going in this mountain with his infantry see what's going on he sees all this now he's considering hmm should i use my power right here nope he's not using it so that copter is actually gonna live interesting he uh he allows the free hit he goes double which is actually kind of smart because ghost seven starting to go off the chain with these copters he's starting to copter spam like i said two base maps copter spam copter spam everyone loves their copter spam but ghost seven doesn't even have an anti over there yet, so Torch is a little more grounded in terms of anti -air. We're dead even in the income, but Ghost 7's about to take the lead once he starts capturing these properties and these ones over here. Torch is nowhere near to capturing these back properties, so Ghost 7 is more positioned to take more properties, whereas Torch is a little more better positioned in terms of his units. So bringing in the copters right out of unit provision, as you always want to do. Now Ghost 7, king of the. <laughs> Bringing in a recon, later recon. Like I said, you like recons? I don't really like the recon on this side over here when you have the mountain, but each their own. Also, Tordred. I don't know why he brought his, uh... Huh. I guess it's a roll. I thought it was a one-hit KO. Maybe it's a roll, but still there's a threat of a one-hit KO. So I don't... I don't know why he went off of that. I would have went on the city over here. This city over here. One of the cities. Um, but hey. The mech comes out. Mech is... Man, it like blubbering around with its blubber. I like how it walks. Kind of goofy little penguin. Goofy little penguin. Well, you're not getting that. We already have the artillery locks from both sides. Like I said, this is gonna be a standoff. This is gonna be some World War I shit. They're entrenched in their bunkers. They're gonna fire artillery and blast the smithereens, but hell no, you're not getting past them. You're like, just uh, there's no man's land in the middle and you're firing artillery on both sides. Easy copter kill over here. Just a misplay. I guess he didn't didn't realize that uh, Tordred has vision. Uh, so uh, Tordred with beautiful vision right here. I would have uh, the copter. What did he even do this turn? Did it get a kill? It did. It got a kill, but it was a four HP infantry. So a bit of a blunder by uh, Go Seven. Very rare blunder by Go Seven. Free copter kill. This tank doesn't even reach without a side slip, but he probably will use a side slip this turn because then he can double kill. Uh, double tank kill but there's going to be some tank backup there's an artillery behind there's a tank right there uh so torch is going to make him pay now torch is building his first torch red t copter so he's going to go back for the riches in the back as well and the income gap will eventually be just go seven with a 1k income advantage because no one's capturing that no one's going to recapture that or you know switch hands with that so it's going to be a bit of a an interesting uh place right here i would have I would have put this recon right here, just kept it there, because then the infantry can't cap. In this instance, the tank will attack, the infantry will cap this turn, so I don't really like that going behind like that. Tank doesn't even need to go back. So I didn't I didn't like that move by Tordred. But we got a side slip. 
That's why you have recons. Now you see all this shit and you're like, oh, maybe I shouldn't attack into all this shit. There is a lot of units. Go seven doesn't give a shit. Go seven doesn't give half a shit. He's busting through low rolls, low rolls. He wanted to break through that and then he wanted to bring his copter in, I guess. And then he wanted to bring his one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, uh, that would have been nice. Copter kills that. Well, you can still kill it with the copter. Let's see what he, yeah, he's still gonna tell the tank with the copter and then he's gonna attack the artillery. So it didn't really matter that much, but uh, Tor Dread, I like, this mech is actually putting in some good work. Go7, if you wanna learn how to use mechs, watch his videos, or his, just his playing. Uh, he knows how to make mechs work. Not many people know how to make mechs work, especially if you're not Sammy. Go7 knows how to make mechs work. I've seen, I've seen him use mechs well with Cole, with Adder, with Andy. Uh, he just knows what he's doing. Uh, so if you want to learn how to use mechs, watch Go7. Got the copter chain building another mech over here. Well, now you have the T-copter, honestly, the mechs make a lot of sense. I didn't like the early mech, even though he's proving me wrong, but now that you have a T-copter to get those back properties, hell, yeah, build some mechs. You're at her, man. But now you're going to see block rock. I'm sure of it. We do see it. And uh, Tordred's going to punish. Let's look at the stats real quick. 10 to 8, Tordred has more kills than deaths. Oh no, he has more deaths than kills, uh, but that's about to change. So, puts his recon in over there. Tank comes in over there. Boom, kill a copter, kill a tank. This copter comes in, gets a free hit. Now, I was curious why he didn't attack in this, uh, this plane over here. You're gonna get a lot more damage. This is gonna bring it down to like three. Um, I, oh yeah, okay, so he wanted to bring the tank over there. Now he's doing a friendship. Tordred is bringing all his units quietly behind the scenes. Luckily for Go7, his little Pengi over here, Operation Pengi, sees the copter. Sees the tank. Sees both of them. Lucky little Pengi. If he didn't see that, he would have no idea the huge torture uh, front shift is coming. Now he, he best beware. He's in for a scare. So Tordred uh, not making it completely hidden that he has a, a front shift. Now Go7 is aware he needs to pull the fluff back. You see it. You see a front shift in this manner. You want to pull back. You don't keep fighting into that. And Go7 will pull back. There he goes. Finally gets a roll on his side. Pull back. It's sort of in the middle over here. It's, it's all right. He's got an artillery. It's a little safe, but he's still, he's gonna have to pull back from the side over there. There's no way it's untenable to fight there. Uh, attacks with his mech though, because you know get some value kill. I guess he's got to retreat that and heal. Got to heal your units. Even if they're at one HP, you would need to heal. Now he's doing his own front shift. This is still no one, no man's land, no man's land over here, no man's land over here. It's super hard to get these contested properties when there's so many artilleries. Uh, flying around, but uh, Go7 does have a 2k income advantage. It's gonna be, you know, once Torture gets that and he gets the back properties like Go7, eventually he'll be pretty much right behind him, but for now, that's a kill, because he's Jake. That's not a kill, but now he sees the artillery, and now come the copter spam. Oh no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ooh, you wanna attack that copter there. Luckily for Go7, he does have a copter that can just strike back. But, uh, oh, he's attacking copter to copter. Now, recon and recon violence, terrible. Copter on copter violence, I encourage it. They're great deterrents for other copters. You don't always need an anti-air to fight, you know, copters. One copter attacking another copter, seven to three, that copter's basically dead. Uh, so, copters are great. Sometimes copter spam beats copter spam. You don't need to overthink it. You don't always need to have anti-air. We're already on day 15, though. Tordred's sneaking up behind. Uh, Go7 in terms of uh, in income, but Go7 is behind on units and he's behind on value. Let's look at the stats now. Now Go7 is behind 18 to 12. So he's behind six kills. So he needs to be a little bit careful over here because I said once the unit count goes low below 20, it starts to snowball a bit. So he's going to have to have a nice turn. He's probably going to pop a side slip because we're in a crucial moment right here. Mm hmm. Hmm. Will he use it? Looks like he will not. He sees this clearly with it. I'm sure he doesn't give a shit. He attacks the copter in there. He is going all in. Copters attacking copters. Infies attacking infies. The copter spam continues. This mech over here, put that, ferry that, pull it. Oh, oh. But if you put that mech in there and you plop that in the forest, then he could block, but he doesn't know that Tordred has his own anti-air. So he, he thinks he can block probably. Uh, oh no, he doesn't even block. He doesn't give a shit. Uh, I was wrong. 
but now these now it's gonna be the ma great copter massacre of uh, 2023. Boomba. Tordred is trying the unthinkable. He's trying to capture a middle property that's been artillery locked for most of the game. Will it go well for him? He's not even going for this property. He just goes straight for this one over here. Two copter kills. Three copter kills. A lot of dead coppers. Tordred is killing it right now. 23 to 16. Still behind, but he could pull ahead right now. Tanky Chordred, he spilled so many enter. This is Mangs over here. Remember, I built like two coppers once versus Mangs, I think in a stalling rod game. And he built like four, no, I think five anti air for two copters. Tordred, he knows this map well. He knows the copter spam here. You know, he knows the copter spam here. He's got four freaking anti air. And his own copters. He's got so many air deterrents right now, it's insane. So, what's Ghost 7 to do? He's got a power saved up, he's behind on unit count. He's behind on unit value. He's ahead on income, but he's in a tough spot. So what will he do? First he captures, gets vision, and probably contemplating. He has vision now. Will I use my superpower or my power? He opts to use his power. So now go seven, attacks the anti-air there, murders one copter. Mm, doesn't quite murder the anti-air. Mm, damages another one. Ooh, but you see the superpower, extra range gonna hit that tank that's unfortunate for him happens but the mech spam continues mech spam continues and he's gonna have another power after this power that's the beauty of adder when you have a full super bar you use the power you can use the power immediately after that's just how it works that's why adder's better than coal you can use two consecutive powers without having to get in any additional charge so go seven more copters more mechs and he's base skipping over here. He's going all out on the side over here. This is the final front over here. And he's about to go behind on income. Er, yeah, he, not this turn, he's not gonna go behind, but he's gonna lose his advantage. Now we have a beat down. That's right. Not a superpower, a CO power. Now, was this a misclick? I don't know. I knew for a fact he at least wanted to attack this. So that's probably why he used it. But I don't know why he didn't just use the full superpower. Maybe he wants to hold it down for later. He wants the extra 10-10 later on. Um, but he uses a beatdown. Maybe he's Tordred flexing. I don't know. Oh my god. Two more anti -air. Like I said, he doesn't give a shit. Look, now Go's building copters over here. He's building so many damn copters. Go7 is going ham with the copters. Because he knows that he's ahead. Or Go7 knows that he's behind in unit count, so he's trying to make up for it when copters, but Tordred sniffed that shit out. He doesn't even have a spy, but he still knows. He just has that intuition. He's a Tordred intuition. So now Go7 is going on the offense over here. He's trying to sneak something. He doesn't realize the recon was there, but it's too late now. He's probably going to sneak that uh, uh, artillery over there. He uses sim another si side slip, the second consecutive side slip. Kills off that tank. Or not quite. Now he kills off that tank with a mech. The mechs are getting pretty decent usage. He he's has to make do with the extra funds, or the, the limited funds he has. If you're pumping out two copters a turn, that's 18k. And so that's uh, that's another 2,100. So he could pop a, another, without any repairs, he could pop two copters, a mech, and an infantry, but uh, he has some repairs to deal with. So these, these mechs are doing pretty decently. Now he opts to tech up. Um. I don't know, if I see two artillery over here, I'm a little hesitant to tech up. I probably would've just gone full tanks. But, see each their own. He actually had a pretty good turn. Tordred is actually now behind 20k. If we look to the beginning of the turn... Uh, whoa. Go7 was behind 30,000. And then he was behind, uh, ahead. So we're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So this is a pretty crazy game right so far. No clear winner. Go7 looks like he's going to try to capture each of these. Tordred will be able to interrupt both of them. See how he does it. His anti-air kill him. Yet another Go-Copter. Another... Look, oh my god, these Tordred anti-air are like a meme. Oh my god, he's got one, two, three, four, and like three other ones died. He's built like seven. Doesn't opt to interrupt this cap over here, so Go7 will secure an additional income lead. Although Tordred is going to capture that. And he might even capture... No, he's not going to capture the artillery over there. That poor little anti-air, though. 
It's gonna get murdered by this uh, this random artillery just in the middle of the plains, not even hiding in the fort, just shamelessly out in the plains, like, Ooh, hey there. Doesn't even give a shit. It's like they read each other's mind. Tank on this, medium tank on this side, medium tank on this side. They just both decided simultaneously, hey, I should tech up. It makes more sense for Tordred, honestly, because there's two artillery over here, uh, whereas there's only one over here, or as far as he knows, at least. Now, now go seven. He's going hard for this. <laughs> that sounded wrong. He's getting hard for this property. Uh, but he's mm, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think he's going to get that property. I'm not sure that recon. If he uses beat down, he's going to knock that down to either three or four. If he attacks without any prop powers, he's on a plane. So I think it's a roll to get it to four. So it's, it's questionable. So he could be getting a nice, another income swing. And go seven, my god, he needs an income swing. He's at 18 units right now. He's suffering. But Tordred's suffering too. This is a slog. We've got some big baboon beatdowns going on. Uh, so no one's getting any rest. This is just endless fighting. The unit count is on both sides of suffering. we got early, late game recons to see what's going on. I'm not sure about this one as much as this one. This one makes sense because you can't see shit because without the mountains, but... I guess this is the, the, the tank, or the, uh, the, or the um, excuse me, the infantry murderer. You see someone cap in there, then that recon's gonna murder you. Gonna murder ya. But now Tordred, is he gonna use another beatdown? Ooh, he's getting close to a superpower, to be honest. Another beatdown? I, it's been a long time since I've seen two Jake beatdowns in one game. What exactly is this going to accomplish? Oh, it's, okay, well, it's gonna stop that. Is that why he did it? Interesting. Oh, so he wanted that trade. And he's going to finish it off with the copter, maybe? Okay. Not quite, but good enough. Stop that. Okay, so he, he did it to, to weaken off this over here. It would have sucked if he didn't use it, and then he got to five, and then he captured that, and that was alive. So, honestly, not terrible usage. Kind of kind of flexy, but kind of cool at the same time. I'm not going to hate on that. He's been His beatdowns have been pretty decent so far. Um, so, hey, more power to him. Go seven though, retreats over there, he's got his mechs. He's consolidating forces over here, he's backed up after all that. He got he uh, take his little penguin tail. Do penguins even have tails? He took his little penguin tail feathers and between his legs and waddled home. Um, but starting to get a little proliferation over here, pulling back on the forces, trying to let his units swell, uh, getting more mech count. But now because he's pulling back, he's allowing Torger to capture this property. So Tordred, he's only behind 1k, and he won't be behind very soon when he captures that. So where is that extra money coming from from Go7? Oh, this property right here. Because Tordred does have that middle over here, but once he captures that, Tordred, when he captures these two properties, Tordred will have the income lead. And Go has led pretty much the whole game in terms of income. Tordred, like I said, he loves freaking anti-airs. He loves his anti-airs. He, he, he loves them so much I can't even articulate how much. Going in for the kill over there. Boom! He sees... He saw that there was an artillery there. He doesn't give half shit. He's go freaking seven, boy. Doesn't give half shit. Sure, gonna hit off on the medium tank, but honestly, I kind of like that. Very ballsy. He's got artillery backup. I mean, he's got a copter backup. Oh my god, he's got so many copters. He's got a mech, tanks, he's got double recons, so... He's got... Man, he's swarming all his copters. Honestly, if I'm go seven... Well, you did see the artillery or the anti-airs over here, so it's I understand why he front shifted. He's just gonna go over here, get a bunch of like five copters, and maybe there's two anti-airs, you lose two copters, but the more copters you have, the more reckless you can be with them because the anti-air can only kill a couple at a time, if you assuming you only have two. So if you attack with two copters and he has two anti-air, that's just dumb. But if you attack with like six copters and he's only got two anti-air, then it starts to make a little bit more sense. So now, pretty dead even. Tordred slightly ahead on unit value and unit count, um, especially after he builds units and does his damage this turn. Interesting little maneuver with his uh, artillery here. I'm assuming that, or the anti there, I'm assuming he wanted to avoid uh, breaking through this and then attacking the, uh, the uh, artillery over here. So he's using this as a wall. That's how many artillery he has. He's using, art I mean, anti-air he has. He's using anti-air as a wall. Forget infantry walls, they're a thing of the past. Now we got artillery wall. Er, my god, I can't pronounce these stupid little shits. Er, anyway, Tordred saving up some mun muns. Hmm. What's he gonna buy? Neotank? 
Bomber. Fighter. God knows. Not a rocket. Hell, you don't build a freaking rocket on this map. No way. Go to rocket. Something's wrong with you. Take you to the loony bin. Go seven. Teching up again. He's got his medium tank ready now. He's pulling back though. He's got a little. I like these double little mechies. And he's got that. It's like he's luring towards you to come. Oh, kill my weakened little medium tank. Yeah, you're gonna get cluster clucked. He's holding on to his power. Smart move. You don't want to waste your power. You want to use it when you can have a strong pack uh, attack. But not to our dread because he pulled back. He doesn't even have vision over here. Oh, he does have vision, barely. Uh, but go seven, or Tordred's about to capture that property. He's got his... Interesting how this one's over here focusing on this rather than... I think he's bluffing right here because Ghost 7 doesn't know that Tordred... And maybe he has his artillery here, but he actually has it over here to defend this unit rather than this unit. Interesting maneuver by Tordred. Psychological shit right here. Man, look at these blockers for the copter and for the uh, artillery over here. So now Ghost 7 using his recon wisely. Sees what's going on using his 1 HP recon. That's why you love 1 HP recons. You think they're, oh, they can't even do anything. Well, I beg to differ. Look at that vision he's giving. Now he sees the whole little puzzle over here. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have a super and he doesn't have anything in range, so he can't really attack this turn. But he's probably gonna make his move next turn. He's gonna get everything in position. Slowly but surely getting everything in position. And he's probably gonna use a super to be perfect last. I'm expecting a super, not just a normal little go seven. Oh my God, look at this. Look at this death ball over here. He's got a little bit of stuff over here, but my God, look at all those units. Now we're starting proliferation. Now we got in the thirties of units. Before we were like 18 to 20. Now the units, mm, now we're in the thirties. The Tor Dread gets the income advantage. Long last, he gets the income advantage. And he's proliferating as well. He's got a lot of units. He's got a lot of units. Go seven has two artillery and an anti over here. Two anti-air and artillery and a recon. So Tordred has more over here and less over here than Go seven has over here. Cause he's got two medium tanks. One's, one's crippled for sure, but he's got max tanks. He can even try to capture the middle over here if he wants to using a super. So let's see where Go 7 will he use a power or will he use a super? If he had a super right now, I think he would use it, but he might just use a normal power. Beep, beep. Okay, he needs four to capture and he knocked it down to two, so that but buys another turn. He's building a bomber. He's building a bomber. I mean, there's three freaking anti here over here, but he's building a bomber, God damn it! He's saving up for the super, I know. He's gonna inch, yeah, he's inching slightly closer, just inching a little bit closer. Because he just wants to, oh man, he's so close. He sees the vision of the infantry. The infantry can only see two spaces in front of him, so he's strategically right out of range. Tordred doesn't have a recon over here, so that's just where the recon on this side actually helps. If you have the mountain over here, you can't even see over here. So having a recon in this instance actually is quite beneficial. So Ghost being super slippery about this shit. He's gonna move his mechs forward a couple spaces, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, yeah, they're ready for the superpower. Oh, no, keeps them right there. He's, little does Tordred know. This little clump over here, mm. But now he sees the medium tank. And what will he do? He's playing a little, he attacks into the medium tank. You know what, he's got so many copters, why not? He's attacking in. He wants that property so, so bad. Will he be able to get it? King of the, He's not gonna let that cop property go so easily. He's gonna kill Copter with the anti-air, gets him enough charge, and I'm assuming he's gonna use either a super or his, his CO power. There's no way in hell he doesn't use either, but first he's gonna kill the Copter, then a dumber, lower rated player would use it immediately. But you wanna kill the Copter first because it doesn't matter what CO power you have, it's still gonna be a one shot. So he's gonna kill that first. Interesting. I. I don't know why I didn't... Hmm. Okay. Now he uses his superpower. Sidewinder. Very rarely do you see Sidewinder popped as adder, much less so at the highest level of play. Now Go7 is officially all in. Attacking that. Mech coming out of the woodwork. Boomba. Medium tank, Boomba. Oh, it doesn't quite kill. But he's all in. He's all in. He's not even using 
these ant area, he wants to get these copters in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eh, he's not gonna reach, I don't think. So I don't know about that. The mech though, he's gonna kill that other copter. That's for freaking sure. Oh, he's not attacking that with, interesting. Interesting. And now, Boomba, kill off the tank. Oh, no, kill off that. Boom, interesting. Go7 has quite the formidable force over here. Now he's ahead 40,000. But Torch just got a superpower, he's got this. The question is, do you fight on or back off? Now, he's got a Neo Tank, so he's not gonna back off. Once you build the golf ball, the big old Neo Tank golf ball, all bets are off the table. You're going for the jugular. You don't build Neo Tanks to play around. Oh, they're cute, round. No, you use them to murder people. You use them to raise villages. That's what Lash used to murder everyone in Olaf's hometown. She used Neo Tanks to gun everyone down. They're not there for play. Here comes the block rock. No beat down this time. Oh no, block rock. This is gonna be devastating, I'm sure. Front shifting as you should. Smart, capturing that property while I was at it, why not? Boom, boom, bye. And you know that bomber's gonna die. Bye. Doesn't die, actually, I should say. If he attacked from a plane, it would die, but he doesn't quite have uh, the availability of that. Kills off a lot of copters. Torjad, it wouldn't be a Torjad turn with another anti-air, my god. One, he's got five anti-air simultaneously on this map right now, it's insane. But Go7, he's not giving up, he's not fighting, or he's not retreating. He's attacking, he's killing all the units he can. That Neo, I don't know how he's gonna deal with the Neo Tank though. He doesn't really have anything to kill off the Neo Tank. And uh, very curious usage of uh, this copter right here, suiciding itself in, in order to get some charge, I would assume. Interesting. Ah, it was just like a little bit of a puzzle. This wouldn't be able to reach. One, two, three, four, five, six. Unless you go around. One, two, three, four, five, six. So in order to do that, he needs to kill off this anti-air. So in order to kill the anti-air, he sacrifices his own copter. Hmm. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. Attacking that, killing that, and then a recon following up would have been really nice. Ghost is probably quite upset about that. A decent counterattack. He's got more units, but Tordred's going to put another, you know, foot stomping on this turn. Neo tank, nothing can kill the Neo tank so far. Well, there's a bomber, but even if the bomber kills the Neo tank, there's two anti-airs that are clean up whatever remains of that. Tordred's front shifting everything, building another anti-air. I swear to God, Tordred has auto queue on for, an for anti-air. Just so many. And he's starting to get farther ahead in terms of unit value. Equal on unit count for the most part, but far ahead on unit value. Ghost 7 does have a power though. Gets vision, now he's a side slip. He's not gonna be able to reach the Neo Tank though. And man, Tordred, so many anti-air. It doesn't even matter because he's got so damn many. Ghost 7 thinks he's killed all of them. Oh, I'll kill this, oh, I'll kill this. But no, Tordred has more. They never end. There's so many anti-air. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. Go seven does pull ahead in terms of in or in terms of unit value that turn. And he's going for this property over here. Little does he know there's zero chance that's gonna happen. Boom, dead copter. Another beatdown. A third beatdown by Tordred. Third Tordred beatdown. That's pretty crazy if you think about it. Was it just to get this attack off though? That's kind of strange. Maybe it was for the 10-10. Kind of curious. But hey, it's worked for him so far. Copter kills that. Neo Tank gets another kill. Another anti-air. So many anti-air. And it's done him great this whole battle. It's absurd how many anti-air he's built, but they're all doing work. It's not like Mangs' anti-air just like sitting around like, hey, what do I do? Who do I shoot at? No, these anti-air are like oh, fresh off the base. Oh, you're welcome to the club in war. Oh, murder him. Like this right off the base and start attacking. They don't just sit around. And there's a freaking another one over here, like one, two, three, four, five. Five anti from Torjet. I just need to look at the stats right now. 11. He's built 11 anti -air. Five are alive, six died. Torjet's pretty far ahead in terms of uh, 
kills and deaths. He's five ahead and he's 60k higher in kills. So, but it's Ghost's turn. And that's gonna change with that dead Neo tank. He's still fighting. Doesn't quite kill the Neo tank. I guess he's gonna attack from the city. Finally kills it. Kills the copter. Murders the, ant or the artillery finally. And now we're back down to 20 ish units. To 100,000 value before we we're hovering around 200,000. Now we're starting to stabilize a bit. That bomber's dead though, 100% though. 100% though. Now it goes back in the trap in the teens. He's at 17. It's looking shaky, and Tordred's banging another golf ball. Tordred is like the land army kind of guy. Ghost 7 is building coppers every single turn. Tordred's more like, ah, I'll build a Neo tank. I'm like a bomber, I'll build a Neo tank. I'll build a medium tank. I'll build tanks. But don't look now, but go actually secure the income lead. During all those fighting, he lost a lot of units. He does have something that he gained from it. It's not much. It's 1k income advantage, but it's better than losing all these units for nothing. So he, uh, he lost a lot of units, and he's behind at the end of his turn. He's, uh, it's not looking great for Ghost 7 right now, but he's freaking Ghost 7. He's, uh, he's one of the best, if not the best Fog player. I mean, I, he is probably the best Fog player. I, I shouldn't kid myself. He's the best Fog player. Uh, so he's got something up his sleeve. So what's Ghost 7 going to do? He needs to have some counterplay because he has he's far behind on unit value he's far behind on units he has income value income advantage so now he's starting to tech up with medium tanks now we're going to see that no more copter spam he's i mean he's got three copters there's still a lot but for, for him usually he's pumping out two or three copters a turn he had a lot of copters but now tordred beep beepers kills off the recon no vision now now go seven is operating in the dark and tordred using this that teacup that was here over here before, now it's transporting infantry to capture this, to capture this, to capture this, to capture this. Put pressure on the airport. Now we can airport lock him. Go7 has been defending that airport pretty well, but now it can be airport locked. And that's scary. Go7 does have a super coming or two powers if he so chooses. So what is he gonna do? He's gonna use a little side slipperoo. He's behind 70,000 though, 11 units. What could Go7 possibly do to turn this game around? Well, let's see. Kills off the infantry there. Kills off the anti air over there. Kills off the tank over there. Kills off that tank. And now if you attack the copters, they're all defended. Builds another bomber. So that new tank is, has a death wish. And look now, Tordred only, only has three anti air and one of them is at three HP. So. He's getting a little bit down there with his anti-air. But the copters are coming in. Boom. Boom. And the beatdown. He killed all three of those copters. That was brutal. That was like half of Go 7's unit value. He was at 136,000. Then boom, 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 boom. And then we're already down to 100,000. And a beatdown. Now why did he use the beatdown? I have no freaking clue. We'll find out. Copter comes in, that's a kill. Comes in, oh, because he wanted a nice hit over here. Luckily for Go7, he at least can kill that golf ball, that pesky little golf ball. Oh no, but Tordred's about to kill this artillery that was the whole crux of the operation. That was the one thing defending everything, and now it's gonna die. Oh, not quite, but still. That's rough. Tordred has the income advantage. Tordred has double the freaking unit value. What is Go7 to do? He's gonna kill the Neo tank. He's gonna use a side slip. Boomba. Recon comes in. See what's going on. Uh, but he's. Uh, he builds a fighter. Now, um. I mean, there's some copters here. And don't look. Tordred only has these two. So Ghost 7 does have air superiority. These copters better flee. If I'm Tordred, I probably wanna flee a little bit. So let's see what he does. Kills off the unit over there. No, he's not fleeing. He's, he's putting on the gas. He's attacking the medium tanks. And he gets hit off on the bomber. Ooh, that hurts a lot. Didn't think he'd be able to break through with the power with the extra 10-10. I didn't think he'd be able to breast through that. But he gets a nice roll. Damages the bomber. Damages the anti-air. Damages another anti-air that's just sitting around. This is looking extremely bad for Ghost 7. 
He's behind by soon to be, what? 12 units, double the income, or double the uh, unit value, and he's behind. This is looking like resigned territory for Go7. He's not resigning. Fighter comes in, gets a hit. Antero tries to kill off the copter. Kills off one of the copters. Medium tank kills off the other Antero. So there's no more Antero. So anything he builds in the airport is, is safe because that Antero is far, far away. So at least he has got that hope. But then he gives up. And there you have it. Tordred. Finally. Best Go7. I think these guys have played a few games together. I think this is the first time Tordred has beaten Go7 in, in Global League. Uh, it's always super close. And Tordred, if you, I don't want to give anything away, but you need to watch that Fall Goblin Goblin game. That game was nutty. Tordred is really good. And Go7 is really good. I don't see anyone beating Go7 in Fog these days other than Tordred. The closest I've seen someone to beating Go7 has been like Inkagark. But Tordred usually pushes him even further. Hogad as well. But I would argue that Tordred, maybe just maybe he just has Go 7's number, but who threatens Go 7 the most isn't Hogat, isn't Inkagark, even though those are two higher level rated players than Tordred, but Tordred himself. So it's kind of like, I don't know, he's just got his number. Similar to like me and Starflash. Like I remember I had his number for a good bit, even though he crushes other people that beat me. Like sometimes you just have the, num the number of an opponent and you just beat them. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the first time Go 7's is lost in the global leagues in ages in ages in fog especially maybe one loses once in a while on standard but this is the first time he's lost in fog in a long time and it wasn't like i mean it was close it was 33 days but tordred put on a good show over here my goodness that was very impressed by tordred i don't even there was no like obvious part where the game like shifted into ghost or tordred's favor it was very slight very it wasn't a snowball it was a little tiny inch by inch Tordred inches ahead even though Go7 had the income advantage it just he always had enough anti-air I think that was the key to the game he always had enough anti-air no matter how many copters Go7 had he had five copters attacking Tordred had four anti-air he'd kill four of those copters you expect two anti-air right oh no Tordred had freaking four anti-air he had five anti-air on the board at the same time he had four over here and one over here sometimes two over here with the anti-air and he used them so well that was some of the best uses of anti-air i've ever seen and uh mangzi take some notes of like how to use the anti-air effectively especially on what maps to use uh anti-air spam on this is one of them when you have three airports and just two bases you can expect some copter spam but my god tordra had made this look hmm chef's kiss that was, a, that was just a good game and he was behind here too he didn't have the center for the longest time but then he got it back and he did the unthinkable. He actually flipped a property over here that's in range of the forest of the lock. You can even put something in the forest over here and the artillery over here. It's very hard to reach. But he did it. By golly, he did it. But I hope you guys were entertained. Hope you guys learned something new from the two best players of Fog. And I'll see you guys next time. Bitch.